So to create a position versus time graph using Excel, the first thing you want to do is, is, is type in your data. Now, the first column, which you can see here I have listed as the time, is always going to be the x-axis of your graph. All right. And with time being the, the independent variable, that's the independent variable, you're going to want to have that on the x-axis. Okay. And so for every corresponding position, we have a responding time. So it took 12.2 seconds to get to the three meter mark. Now your data may look a little different depending on how you conduct your experiment or any data for that matter. But this is just generally speaking how you would create a, a, a what's called a scatter plot graph using Excel. So the first thing you want to do is actually highlight your data that you want to graph. And we're going to go up to insert and from there we will, you have a couple different options of different charts that you want to select here. We actually want to insert a scatter plot. Okay, so I've created a scatter plot and right out of the gate, it drops it in and it plots the data, but there's a lot of other information that we need to add to this to understand what it is that we're looking at. So if you click on this plus symbol, there's some elements that you can add, all right? The first thing I want to add is some access titles so we can come back and label them and you have the ability to create a legend so you can label it maybe you had a couple different series of data that you'd want to put on one graph and you can label each one um, the individual data points you can add there so you can play around there's lots of different things here but really what you definitely want to add for this specifically for position versus time graph is called a trend line now this trend line here, as you can see, is, is what's called to refer to as a best fit line. It's taking all the data points and basically finding the average of all of them. Now, it's the best fit line. It doesn't mean I connect each dot, okay? It is the average weight of all of the data points together, creating one unique line. So as we know, the slope of a position versus time graph is going to tell us the velocity. So the slope of this line here would be the average velocity during this period of time that we have. So you can go in and double click on here and change the title um, to whatever you want. In this case, let's just say tumble buggy lab position time. And maybe we want to refer to this title of this axis here, we'll just call it X. You can type out position if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna do X to be brevity right now. And again, down here, talking about the time being on the X axis, again, time being the independent variable. And everything looks good. Now, what I do wanna do is get the equation out of this line, okay? So I'm gonna double click on the actual trend line and it pulls up some options for me. Um, if you had a best fit of an exponential curve that you were expecting, you can change what that trend line option is going to be to best fit the data. In this case, we're expecting a linear relationship. So I'm going to leave it as linear. And down here at the bottom, you can say display equation. Okay, so right here is the equation that is the best fit line of this data that we graphed over here. So I'm gonna click off of this for a second. Now, if you click onto the actual equation itself, you have the ability to make this a little bit larger. Go down to home, instead of a nine, let's make it 12. All right, it's a little bit easier to see. It's in a slope intercept form. Again, Y equals MX plus B. So M is the slope saying it's moving at 0.255 meters per second. Okay, if you wanted to change this data, you, you grabbed the wrong la labels or you, you needed to select a different set, you can right click on the actual chart and go to select data. And from here you can edit and you can see that you can select a different series of X or Y values. And by clicking on here, it allows you to go ahead and it's showing you what it's graphing. That's in fact what we want. But if for some reason it wasn't on the right thing, you could go through and highlight it again here and then click enter or click on that, click OK, and it would update the graph accordingly. But of course, we didn't need to change it. It was what we already wanted. 
So we've created a position versus time graph. Also, if you wanted to, when you're clicking on this trend line, you can look at the different options, um, change the line type, the width, the thickness, the color. Um, so if we go down here to dash type, we can make it a solid line if we wanted to and change the color as well uh, to make it red. Okay, so there's lots of different things you could do there to change and customize it as you want. So that's how you create a position versus time graph. So let's actually go ahead and highlight that. Hit control C. We'll go over to a Word document. Now, you can right click and, and then bring up these paste options. Okay, so you can paste it just as a picture. So it's just an image file. Keep the source formatting. Use the destination as a link. Or you can actually paste it with an embedded work. So it'll, it'll link back and forth to it. So now it's embedded. If I add this or modify it, it's going to actually, if I modify this spreadsheet, this information will, will can go back and forth and will automatically update. All right, so I'm going to just hit Control Z and undo that. If you right click and actually paste it as a picture, it's just an image file that you can do with what you want. So if you change your spreadsheet for some other reason, but you don't want this to change, you're good to go. It's just locked in as an image file. And just like any other picture in, in Word, you can manipulate it just the same. Okay? So that's how you can use a position versus time graph and incorporate it into your report if you're using Word. And one of the other things I wanted to show you here was the equation editor. So if you go down to insert and then over here to the right, click on equa equation, you have the ability to type in your equation and there's lots of very accessible features. I like the equation editor that's built into native into Word. It's a little bit easier to use. However, the one on Google, uh, Google Docs with the math type isn't that bad either. Either one will work. It's just we're just trying to polish up our reports and make them more professional looking. So I'm going to hit S equals since that's where we are starting out as speed is equal to the distance over time. So I need to add the fraction in. So we're going to go ahead and hit D and I'm just using the arrow keys to navigate around between the different boxes. All right, so we're going to hit enter and we've made that equation. If I want to add another one for the next line, I can hit again, insert and equation, start a new one. This time we're going to actually plug in the variables and need to add the fraction. Navigate back here, and we're going to say that the top is, let's say, two meters. That was the distance that we used, and our average time was eight seconds. Except this time, instead of hitting enter and going to a new one, I'm going to continue on with the equation and actually just put in and solve for it right here. So it's 0.25 meters slash per second. Okay. Now, you can add the fraction if you wanted to this way for the for the units, but it allows you to type it right in here, which is great. Again, I'm gonna hit enter and it pulls it right in. Okay, now these are each individual. If I double click in here, I can just update it right here in the in Word. What's nice about this as we continue on with some more advanced equations, it allows you to really add more uh, information. You can do exponentials. Um, let's say if we wanted to look for summation, basic math, let's go to Greek letters, and here we can find sigma. Where are you at? There you are. Sigma, the sum of the forces, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, Newton's second law. So there's a little bit of playing around there, but by using in creating both the graphs and the equation editor, we can really start to polish up our lab reports.